Yeah, I'm, I feel honored to be here. And as when I first heard about the Money Lab, when I was still doing my master's at uh, Goldsmith, and the f very first edition, and somebody ha handed this flyer to me. And that was, uh, you know, back then I was in the UK and then I felt Amsterdam so far away that I couldn't make it. And, um, but after that, I had an opportunity to, um, five years later, I had the opportunity to do a book review of Money Lab Reader 2. And that was the closest I ever kind of got to Money Lab. And then only re very recently that sort of somehow the, you know, the um, developing my practice and kind of landed on this concept of um, environmental collectibles, which, with, with which now then sort of finally sort of managed to make, you know, some kind of connection to this conference. So then, you know, I'm very happy that to, um, uh, yeah, chose my um, application. Um, so um, we live in an age when possibly, uh, when basically um, we're still making some things, but um, we have to say that you're not making anything at the same time. So this is like, for example, the um, um, back of a beer um, that I encountered in Germany uh, on the train, and that was a newly introduced um, back in April. And you know, like basically, sort of they they had all the self um, made up sort of um, environmental claims. Um, they start with starts with the uh, every bottle saves a slice of bread. So they're supposed to be using some kind of uh, waste bread or something like that. And then they say climate neutral brood. You know, you know, I don't know what it means, but you know, cons uh, conserves environmental resources and regionally produced and transparent supply chain. And well, you know, although they seems to be pressing all the buttons, um, I have basically um, you know um, question about it. But um, but also like uh, even tech giants uh, started to make those claims. And this is the um, uh, new Apple Watch that's been um, announced. Um, uh, in September, and they claim it uh, their fir Apple's first carbon neutral product, and you know they also put the you know their own label um, on it, and um, but, and also like in this world of uh, if you dive into this world of eco labels, um, you also like find the all the um, dubious ones. Um, for example, like this a certified uh, sustainable palm oil. Um, uh, you know this is a this is a, a quite sort of highly um, uh, uh, disputed um, the way, well, palm oil itself, uh, farming itself, is um, you know leads to deforestation. But some people argue that switching to alternative um, oil oil resources takes more um, forests, so that it's better to actually switch um, existing um, palm oil um, crops to more sustainable ones and so on. And also, say some people are trying to make carbon free. Um, I don't, I don't know what it means to be carbon free, like when everyone has to breathe, basically. And uh, you know, also like we have, we've got this organic salmon, uh, which is um, has to be farmed. It cannot come from the ocean. So basically, in order for salmon to be qualified to be organic, it needs to be farmed. So you know, fresh. For me, like you know, as of somebody from Japan, um, the most fresh, the freshest fish come, should come from the ocean. But you know, um, in order to get this qualification, you cannot sort of. Uh, um, catch it in the ocean. And my question basically is that the how uh, can we just um, not making? Um, um, you know, when um, everybody is kind of claiming that uh, you know, they're not making anything, you know, any footprint or any harmful, anything harmful, you know, we just, how about we just stop making? And, and then speaking to those ideas to people, like I came across these two issues. Um, one is that the um, not being able to produce enough value, so you know it's 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 apparent. Just if you look at the high streets, for example, then you know like you basically uh, pretty much everything you see is that the old, um, fresh, all the fashion brands, you know, with new clothing and so on. You don't just see that you know all the second-hand clothing shops just everywhere and so on. Um, the second thing is that the uh, people say that um, in order to be creative, you need to make stuff. You know, so that's like basically sort of. A, um, the, what, the problems of not making. And um, so I just basically I came up with this idea of um, using eco-label as a medium. Um, it's basically, it's a, it's a good value concentration um, vehicle. But it's, at the moment, everybody's still like, heading towards um, 
making sort of um, the, um, it's not, you know, the, um, like even organic or fair trade or uh, fair wild. Fair wild is the one that, uh, that's a bit kind of in between, but fair wild is a sort of uh, certificate that um, um, certif uh, verifies the um, wildly picked, sort of wildly picked plants that comes from sustainable sources. And um, but you know so, so basically um, but there's nothing that comes from the non-making direction and that's basically should be this a new um, unmade certificate and this unmade certificate um, verifies creativity in avoiding production so like you know sort of this this way it can still be uh, creative. Um, by not making things. So actually, well, in my very personal opinion, it takes more creativity to avoid production than just simply making. So, um, and also, like this, um, this certificate has this immediate effect on people um, that sort of basically um, it looks well um, morally correct. Um, you know, so it's like you know, if it's a certificate, and then it cannot be something bad. You know, so that, that's what people immediately would think. And. Um, um, this is the um, 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 unmade object uh, supply chain diagram um, that made by um, the Tofu, which is my own company, um, uh, which stands for Technology of Future Utopia. Um, so um, here's this example of uh, the energy drink that I produced um, myself uh, from waste materials. So first you um, need, well, in my case, um, I use uh, Japanese knotweed which is a um, highly invasive plant, pervasive uh, in the Netherlands and beyond. Um, basically everywhere in Europe, it's, it's, it's there. But I figured out a way um, in which you can, you know, sort of get the clean ones, not just randomly picking from the street. And this way you can sort of achieve the same quality, so same as organic farming, but without making any effort. And then also like I involve like a sort of a hitchhiking, sort of a, basically I catch these um, rangers who work for those like clean fields you know, from the you know, city where I live to this field. And then also the, um, um, I store all the ingredients in a found fridge. So just the dips, dips, I can't talk to this later. But these are you know, the, the processes that's sort of uh, distinct to my drink. And this is one, well, for the first unique environmental process um, in my energy drink. And so this, uh, I work with this um, water company uh, in the Netherlands, uh, in Rotterdam, called Evidus. Um, there are 10, 10 water companies in the Netherlands, and I work with one of them. And uh, if you, they basically in the Netherlands, water comes from underground, that um, anything that grows above what they call um, water catchment areas, it's all chemical free. So if you, then they also then happen to have this plant in their fields. So basically kind of, uh, I figured, you know, kind of figured out that, uh, and then it's basically, um, you know, in this way you can sort of uh, get organic, organic non-farm produce, but without making any effort. And if you work with the, another way is to work with the, um, Nature Conservation Organization in the Netherlands called the Staatsbosbier. And everything that they have um, in their field is automatically uh, SFC certified. So it means that, uh, well, you, probably you've seen this uh, certificate somewhere, like uh, on a toilet paper package or something like that. Um, it means that, you know, it comes from the sustainable wood resources. And uh, it means that, the, you know, this plant itself is invasive. So it's, it's invasive means that it's, it's, not, you know, it's not supposed to be there, but it's uh, automatically certified to be sustainable. So you get this strange, you know, sustainable um, invasive plant. You know. And I'm hitch, hitch, uh, hitching um, this uh, water company ranger. Um, well, his name is Melafan Opebek. Oh, he happened, just happened to be my friend. And then sort of, uh, the, yeah, also like use this uh, fridge that I just found next to my studio, just, you know, this lane, you know, just a completely brand new. And uh, well, some people said, uh, well, it's probably like uh, there's just in the middle of moving and you just like sort of stall there like a uh, sort of a fridge. But I, well, no, I didn't because it was laying. And then that's the sort of a sign that actually shows that, the, you know, something has been abandoned. So we just say, uh, and then I waited a little bit and sort of, uh, you know, then I claimed it. So, um, so yeah, so I'm, and also like my studio um, 
it's a um, in the Netherlands it's, a, it's called the anti crack so it's a you know anti squat property so we don't have to pay for electricity so you know so basically sort of it's all um, well it, it environmentally it costs but uh, financially it doesn't um, so um, this is a slide from a workshop that I run um, uh, during my um, residency this summer um, in Croatia um, um, that I did for this uh, makerspace, local makerspace, and um, basically sort of a, you know, um, this is how we can, you know, possibly make an unmade object. Like it's a, you know, Japanese saying. Um, uh, well, I don't, it's a, the provenance of this saying is a bit dubious. Uh, you know, like nobody knows like where it comes from really, but it's quite old, and it means when the wind blows, the the cooper becomes prof profitable. Uh, so, what happens is that when the wind blows, uh, it basically sort of blows away sand, and sand gets into people's eyes, and then you know um, if sand gets into people's eyes, and you know m many people get sort of lose their sort of uh, weak, well weakens their eyesight, and then you know like back in the days, the only thing you could do is to do basking on the street um, with an instrument to earn money. That then you needed this um, instrument. And to make this instrument, you work in the day, they used to use cat skin. So, you know, they have to hunt cats. Then if you hunt cats, then there'll be more um, rats on the street. And then that, those rats would eat the, the barrels. That, you know, they, so that, that makes it actually the sort of uh, the um, barrel maker more profitable. And so basically kind of the feeling of it is kind of trying to cause this to happen with intention. So, um, so um, this, this is my um, core argument. Um, so, like, um, well, when I was running this workshop, like, it was, it took me a while to sort of explain what's the difference to um, recycling or reuse or upcycling, um, you know, in um, unmaking practice. So, um, unmaking involves a lot of waiting, basically. So, sort of kind of trying not to touch things as much as possible. And wait for this moment to, you know, for something to happen. So basically, to then connect the sort, you know, connect this sort of the um, object to, to to make a sort of a chain. And then, so that's, um, you know, for example, like uh, well, where, where I come from um, in Japan, people would say like, uh, you know, if you if if I say, oh, I'm hitchhiking, you know, like a water water company ranger, then people might probably say, oh, why don't you make your own way? To this, the, to those fields, like, you just, why don't you just drive there, or just say why, why don't you take a train? Like, why don't you like make effort? So, sort of, you know, um, and that's like you know, and or like a, when it comes to a fridge, probably why don't you buy your own? You know, like a sort of a, um, so it's but it's all for me like to avoid duplication, and that's 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 for me the the source of um, um, all the environmental inefficiency. Not all, but you know, um, a, more, a lot of uh, you know sort of a environmental damage comes from and you know and and then move to uh, this story of this um, supermarket um, chain that I well used to make uh, a lot of unmade objects uh, on a daily basis so um, this is the uh, only ethical um, meat that you can make in an urban environment so basically um, um, I'm using um, a scheme, a sort of hidden policy the supermarket chain Yumbo has called uh, Fes is Ok Echt Fes. It means that fresh is also, uh, fresh is also uh, really fresh. And it's basically sort of, um, um, it applies to um, all the meat products where actually the, uh, the, the uh, expiry dates basically sort of, with the same day expiry dates basically. You can actually take take them for free, for free. So it basically, sort of, they create some kind of a commons in a sense like within the supermarkets, and then so you can kind of uh, take you know anything you know with the same day expiry days. Um, but what I do that, well, what I apply um, in this process, uh, the unique processes is one is that the um, I do something called meat policing. So um, I I live so close to this supermarket, like two minutes away um, um, on foot, that. Um, you know, so basically, I, I don't want. I'm not the active meat eat, eating person, but I don't want. You know, sort of. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to see meat being thrown out. You know, so it's something. Um, you know, 
that gets gets you know like a ground and you know thrown you know for nothing and it's just uh, unacceptable. But I only do that like 30 minutes before the closing time, that to, to ensure that there's some sort of a social and sort of ethical kind ofness going on. So that you know this is a sort of a both uh, for me a socially and environmentally sort of ethical meet. So like when you meet all these uh, sort of um, um, criteria, then um, it's technically the same as a road kill. So you know some animals killed on the street, uh, on the road. You know, so it got killed, but nobody wanted it, so just you took it. So this is actually well, this this is the actual road kills that you can sort of acquire. So I well, this is just the, the uh, image that I pasted onto the, um, the certificate images are pasted onto the products. Um, but the um, but also, like, here's also comes the, the laziness um, argument. So basically, sort of, um, all these things, although all these meats um, are going to be wasted, then supermarkets um, employees, they don't want to give away everything. You know, sort of, they always, like, they want, they're trying to keep, like, as much as possible. You know, like, they, they have this feeling of um, uh, me kind of trying to sort of cheat somehow, you know, sort of. Um, so you know, you know, can try to acquire something without making effort, basically, and um, so the, you know, that's like uh, you know, it's, it's always strange, like always like a feel, you know, it's like face opposition from employees. Um, so, um, so the price of my um, the, going back to the um, the energy drink um, my that I produce, um, the price uh, stabilized at uh, twenty euros per bottle uh, this year. And um, well, this year is a bit. I had a hectic um, schedule, and I could only go to the field uh, one time. So that sort of um, took me um, 20 hours, like straight. Um, you know, um, well, because I have to sort of harvest like 60 kilos of about 60 kilos of this plant, and then you know, um, my friend Ranger drove me back to my studio in Rotterdam. But then you know, just have, you know, you cannot just kind of uh, leave them, you know, leave the, leave the plants. You just have to kind of process. So that you know, then I I slept the evening in my studio and stuff. And then, uh, well, you know, then I already sold like uh, more than seventy-two bottles, which is like uh, three crate, well, three crates. Like a, you know, like one crate costs four hundred eighty euros, but people are buying. So, and um, well, that makes it the my hourly wage, uh, seventy-two euros per hour. Uh, well, which is uh, well twice the um, like assistant professor sort of hourly uh, wage in the Netherlands. Uh, well, some people say it's it, it's a bit you know cheap for an art object. So um, so this is like um, um, one of the maybe explanations in why kind of um, people um, decided to pay like twenty euros per bottle for my uh, energy drink. So people are finding, seems to be finding value in unique environmental processes in shaping objects. So, you know, in the, in the case of um, uh, my energy drink, um, it was the, um, these, these three processes, sort of um, trying to um, achieve something, um, well, uh, almost equal to organically farmed product without making effort, and also the hitchhiking, uh, you know, ranger to reduce footprint, and uh, also, you know, also like storing some, you know, like uh, ingredients in a bit uh, strange way. And, um, so yeah, I'm then basically sort of, um, I'm hoping that this could possibly um, help people, um, um, or help those, you know, like objects, and hold value. Um, so um, now, um, what I'm trying to do um, is that the um, um, to come up with a, a standard, basically. So, um, so how the how a certificate works is that the you know like a, well, it will only works with the standard, and you know like it works in between standard and label. So um, you first have to have a standard, then after that you can make a certificate. Then you can make a label out of it. So that's the sort of only way. And and then um well um the there are like a sort of international standards and so on. But you know international standards are not free. So 
um, I'm trying to sort of open it up completely sort of for free. So then it needs to be an open standard. And well, th these are the examples of uh, open standard. Well, it's a bit like, you know, it, it, both, both things are quite different things, but you know, system-wise, an example is like a World Wide Web. Uh, it's, 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 it's for free to use. And, and also PDF, it's, it initially was proprietary, but it's now uh, open standard. Um, that's the, um, that's the kind of, pretty much the uh, um, nutshell uh, I'm making uh, in a nutshell. Um, but yeah, um, I have more slides, but um, I think it's good to be, good to open to questions. <laughs>